time for a rescue mission. What you ask for will undermine the whole operation. Skynet has Kyle Reese. And that is his fate. No, it's our fate. I have to save him. He is the key. The key to the future, to the past. Without him, we lose everything. No, you stay the course. If we stay the course, we are dead. We are all dead. Well, we're alive, Ellie. Hi. He's got the key. He's, He's got, got the secret. secret. That was, of He's course, uh, Christian Bale. <laughs> uh, Christian Bale and Michael Ironside there in a very heated scene from uh, Terminator Salvation, one of the great films of our time. Winner of multiple Oscars, multiple Golden Globes. It saw Christian Bale uh, uh, getting the best Lisp award at the, uh, I think, the Retard Olympics. Uh, retard, you can, it's allowed, you're allowed to say retard, it's okay, it's taken off the menu. Retard just means slow. Uh, it also means late in <coughs> French. It does. Uh, but yeah, we are back. It's a two-minute Terminator where we break down the Terminator films two minutes at a time. I'm Ethan McKinley. Across from me is Ellie Fitzgerald. Hi. Not speaking into the mic, traditionally and oh, wonderfully. For God's sake. We're on episode 40 and we're going from minutes 80 to 82, the two minutes bridging that gap. And it, of course, it contains that very heated scene which bridges the two minutes, of course. But it starts with Carl Reese... Uh, Whoops. Uh, John Connor, of course, uh, looking into the darkness as he sees Marcus Wright disappear into it after being let go to go and infiltrate Skynet and save his future father, Carl Reese. And it ends with Christian Bale about to talk uh, to Michael Ironside and give him a good time. So Kyle Reese is the key to the past and the future, but he doesn't know how to hit the music. Damn, she did it. Howdy, stranger. Don't say howdy, stranger, to me. You didn't do the fourth. Thank God. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> yeah, it sucked yeah. Uh, yeah, we're back. It's episode 40. We are going from minutes uh, 80 to 82. And as I said before, it starts with uh, Christian Bale looking off into the night as he lets Marcus Wright escape with his life <laughs> on the off chance he might be able to save his father. And it ends my mistake before the credits uh, with him about to give the big speech of like, you are the resistance. Do not attack uh, Skynet. If you do, you'll kill we're loads of dead. human civilians. We are all dead. And you'll kill my father, who I've only told you is my father because I send him back in time in this crazy, like mythical story of, with me as the new messiah. If you heard John's story, Ellie, in real life, you're like, whatever. Do you not think? I would have assumed that he'd been getting high off crystal meth for a good couple of months. I agree. Especially with the, the gruff sound in his voice. He can only be described. Today's bumper really music course is uh, John Williams' The Black Hole from 1979, one of my favourite childhood films, and my favourite movie robots, Vincent and Bob. Uh, Ellie, you've made notes for this uh, thing. I the have. two minutes bridging the gap, the main crux of this the story, of course. This music's a little distracting. You is need to it? turn it down a little bit. Oh. No, I really love... That's what I mean, though. It sounds really good. I've not seen The Black Hole. I mean, I have a couple, but... Uh. And I've dated a few. <laughs> oh! Oh, Lynn! We uh, call it the oubliette. Um, yes, so I have some notes on this particular two minutes. So, um, as Ethan correctly stated... Try and make it organic, not you making notes and reading it off a list. He said as he read off a list. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I've got the attention span of a goldfish, so I, I need the notes to keep me on track. Uh, well, one thing I do like about the scene <laughs> is Mike Ironside is in it again. He always plays that. He's, even though he's a good guy in this, uh, and I guess he's no, John. No, he's not. How is he a good guy? Because he's part of the resistance. He's John he wants Connor's to kill superior. All the humans. I know, but in reality, from a militaristic standpoint, Mike Ironside is in fact doing the right thing. It's called collateral damage. He's asked to, if, to destroy Skynet. This is their one chance to do it, for, as far as he knows. If they he's stop the, Skynet now, they probably end the war. Now, he knows there's human casualties, or there's going to be, because there's concentration camps there, but they've got to get but, rid of Skynet. All they're going on is a, like a tip that John Connor is not a proven uh, leader really yet. He just They think he's this new messiah, but he's not as far as they know, and he's just saying, don't attack Skynet, you've got to trust me on I this, know. or we're all dead. The only thing that John has in his favour is the fact that his crazy mum had predicted all this. I'm speaking down into the freaking microphone. There you go. I'll make it so, easy for I was you. so close, the hair on my top lip was brushing it. Those two little bits there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hot. <laughs> I'm 
German, what can I say? Um, yeah, the only thing that... Um, you need a Kaiser helmet with a spike on it every time <laughs> you do a, this show, I think. We need to get one for season four. Yeah, because they can see us. Five. Let's not make this show any more complicated than it already is, <laughs> even. Because <laughs> I will just get it in the ear from you, because you're the one that makes this all happen. Not at all. You, you're part of the show. I couldn't do this without you, Ellie. That's my part of the show. I know, but you contribute so much. I mean, I do my uh, thing. I do my own notes and stuff, and I do editing I know, but stuff, the stuff but that you do is all the time-consuming... The funny stuff comes from you, mainly. Oh, shush. Stop it. Um, <coughs> as I was saying... It's not on this show. <laughs> you <laughs> bastard. He speaks the truth. Stop. I'm doing my bit. I know. I can see it in your glasses. I know you're not messaging whores. <laughs> <laughs> Our next podcast has to be about whores. Um, the only thing that John can say is everything that his mum predicted has happened. Mm. So that's kind of a very strong case of argument for John, even though he's not this messiah, even though... But again... But his mum has predicted all this stuff. She has, but she's no longer with us. She died of leukemia in Terminator 3. Mm. All they got are these tapes left by his mother. Would you then still believe John Connor? I mean, what has come to pass? There are machines. He could have faked all this. It's almost like Dr. Silman said in the first film when uh, the Michael Bean version of Carl Reese, the original, the best, he said, this guy's brilliant. I can make a career off him. He's like, this is like deep, deep paranoid delusions. He's like, so, there's so much detail and stuff. People would, would they not think that of John Connor? Would you not think that of John Connor? If oh, totally. spouting spouting all this like future war stuff. I mean, it, they are in a future war, but like, He's a lisping, maybe, foaming at the mouth maybe madman. Maybe, though, because it is such dire times, people are more willing and open to believe or be more radical. It's like the, the rise of Hitler. Desperate times, desperate measures. I mean, there's nothing really that makes... I love how I've brought Hitler into there's this. Nothing, Back to my German there's nothing really that makes John this uh, brilliant future leader. Uh-oh, low battery. That's right. Low battery. Ah. Um, anyway, so I'm going to start with my the notes. Apologies. It's not organic. It's not off the cuff. <laughs> Um, off the hoof. Uh, I thought that uh, Moonface's chebs looked really meaty in this scene. I don't remember them looking that big. Uh, no. My thoughts were, maybe she's managed to somehow artificially impregnate herself with Marcus's baby and she's going to trap him and her jugs are just full of milk. It's uh, been known to happen. <coughs> Chicks love it's doing not. that. The only time that's happened in a movie is demon seed. When a computer gets a woman pregnant. I've travelled over 5,000 miles to give no, you my yeah, seed. Uh, well, you've not seen uh, Moon Bloodgood, who plays Blair Williams. Uh, you've not seen her really in a vest until this point. Dude, we saw a topless in the bloody You're right. I take it back. Desert. We did a whole episode on it. And her chebs did not look that big. So that makes me bra. think that's a padded bra. Mm. Padded bra, and it's the lighting as well. She was light in the dark. Yeah. Do, do enjoy seeing her tied to a chair, though. All sweaty in that. Uh, yeah, so I just thought her breasts looked rather... I have a question, though. I mean... Do I like owls? No. <laughs> what does make John this great leader? Because all, all John knows it's is the that... It's the gruff Batman voice. They're like, it's Batman. You've got to believe him. No, no. But r really, though, what makes John a great leader? All he knows really about the Terminator, that he was chased by one he, when he was a kid. Mm. And his mother was chased by one. And what he was told by the T-800 in 2 and the T-850 in Terminator 3... He doesn't really know the ins and outs He's of how to destroy one. anything, destroy Skynet. I mean, realistically, a Terminator would have brought back detailed files and put them in a computer for him to learn, but that would obviously spread even more of a chance of Skynet becoming a reality. So all he's got really is a memory from when he was he a kid. Yeah, but he would have been the first person to have come into contact with the Terminator. But so they would maybe think he knows Terminators better than anyone. because who that, who, who, Who's this they, though? Huh? Well, none of the people. I mean, the command. The point. The, the guys the, that the are command kind of doesn't believe John Connor. His friends do, and he's like the people around him. But command, Mike Lyons side. No, I don't think. It, I don't think it's Asian that guy. they don't believe. I think it is that they just want to, in their eyes, fix this once and for all. I don't think they really believe that Kyle Reese is in that, is in headquarters Skynet. I think that he just has a job to do, and it's like he says in the next episode, which I'm gonna. Who's this Mike Lyons side? Yeah, um, he wants us to fight the machines like machines. You know, there's no kind of empathy for human life anymore. It's we have a job to do. It's like the SAS. They break you down. They turn you into a killing machine and then that's it. I think, I don't think it's that they don't believe him. I think it is we just need to put an I end know, to this. But again, 
you still have to There's side. Cancer, you you still have to side with command because what choice do you have? You got one chance to well, blow up Skynet again, this now, kind of, this or kind believe of John Connor, who may or may not be uh, a paranoidly deluded schizophrenic. True. Anyway, back to Moonface. <coughs> How has she managed to look so pristine and good in this kind of? Oh, it's the whole films like that. This is the thing. I mean, yeah, I but even now she got taken out. She's been shot. <coughs> You'd have thought that her face would have gone a little pallid. She would have probably lost a fair amount of blood. Oh, yeah, for sure. But no, she just looks like she's just, you know, had a... It's like well, she's, it's ru- it's like she's run through a sprinkler and it's just freshened her skin. <laughs> I'm, I'm she looks amazing. Lots of things don't type in this film. I mean, her being the main one. Uh, and then when he goes, oh, how's the leg? And she goes, I'll live. Again, that's a bit of a homage back to uh, Terminator 2. He goes, a homage? A homage, live. sir. He'll live. You said you wouldn't kill anyone. He'll live. Uh, McG, and he got shot in the leg. Director McGee, I mean, I've said this before, but uh, he read, he told the crew of the film to read the book The Road by Cormac McCarthy, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick, which is the basis of Blade Runner, <laughs> uh, because he wanted them to absorb the bleakness of the world in the novels. Uh, I can see that he's got the road down in terms of like it being like a very dry, desert, arid kind of terrible place. I wanted to see if I could be. You can. You. You just need to kind of like turn the mic that way and lie down there. There you go. I, try, I, <laughs> uh, I don't really think they've captured the bleakness of the road. Uh, I've not read the book, but I've seen the film with Viggo Mortensen, and I've told you like if you want to like feel <laughs> like ugh, like if there's a, it's very few films like like bother you or bother me it really, but uh, the 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 road certainly did. It's literally. Oh just mate, I'm podcasting like a boss right now. <laughs> uh, Ellie's lying down with her <laughs> microphone uh, dangling over her head like I a Bukaki video. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, mom and dad. <laughs> oh god. Uh, anyway, uh, what was my next point? <laughs> oh yeah. Point. So uh, he asked to see my points. Um, Moonface and John Connor, they have a brief discussion. She says, I saw a man, not a machine. Um, And then John goes, how's the leg? She says, I'll live. He bangs on the door and goes, let her go. I was like, what? So he just had a little brief conversation with Moonface. And yeah, just just let her go. Yeah, but he, like... I may, maybe their stories have tallied, but he's let Marcus go as well because he's had to trust Marcus. What choice does he have? But uh, even when he let Marcus go, he was just like, what are you? Again, I think it's more... Ah, <laughs> Went straight up my nostril. I'm speaking right into the goddamn mic. <laughs> Give me the goddamn mic. Give me the goddamn page. Uh, we then see uh, John Connor in that kind of open air hangar thing. Mm-hmm. Surely Skynet would have just destroyed that well i mean we've covered this on numerous episodes like but th- i mean that that is vast that's huge and it's well, out in the open listener spawn wrote and said this was possible that you'd have like skynet wasn't to its full capacity yet neither was the human race you'd have a lot of like military hardware still lying around still functional within all those skynet isn't at its full capacity and yet they can create half humans half terminators <laughs> bollocks you don't know bottle. no but that's what he was defending and i was saying you couldn't really have that because like where would you land an airplane they all basically hks would follow the flying airplanes like the one blair williams is flying to their base and blow them up so every time you took off in a plane you'd have no chance that's why it departs a little bit i think even though technically we haven't got there in the timeline where the human race is literally just eating rats and living under rocks literally and hiding from machines because that's all they can do and it's a ground battle and maybe there's a few jeeps and things this has like got air support, the submarines, the stuff like that. Some of the things they're triangulating would require satellites and things, which would I wouldn't understand because if Skynet got into everything, it would have control of those satellites and things. Can I minimise Viber? Yeah. There's a thing on the film here when they're at the airstrip, Ellie, mm. and it swears blind that this actually happens. And I've looked at it time and time again, not just this airstrip scene. I've looked at all the other airstrip scenes in the day. Apparently... There's a CG version of Arnold Schwarzenegger seen as one of the rebel resistance fighters right after John Connor speaks into the radio to inform the rebels not to attack the machines. Oh, that's not in this two minutes. That's I know, in it's next in the next two, two minutes, minutes, but I've checked that two minutes as well. I checked it, and, and at one point I thought one of the geezers in the background looked like Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> but again, that's not Arnold. Apparently there's a, there's a CG Arnold in there. 
I don't know why they well, do that. The, the, because that, a CG Arnold appears in this film in a future episode. We are coming to that. We've got 17 episodes left or 19. Oh, we've got really tight calves. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Good to know. Uh, yeah, no, it's... Uh, I don't know, it's strange because it's. I've looked at, literally looked at every airstrip scene all throughout this film and I can't see what they're talking about. I've Googled it, I can't see you the You've got to believe it to see it. I mean, I've looked here as well. You see here? I'd imagine he'd be here, but he's not either. I've looked at just before he makes the speech, and I've looked just after he makes the speech. We will cover that in tomorrow's it episode. Would be more I mean, he here, look, useful. he's on the radio. I know. I know, but and it's, again, it's the next there. two minutes that the person's talking I know, about in particular. But it's not in that two minutes either. If they'd given I mean, a time that him? No, frame, that's not him. That's not him. It idea. just seems like a really bizarre and expensive thing to slip into a scene when you can barely see. What I want to know is. Or if at all. A uh, command. Um, he has this debate over the f uh, over the phone over the radio, the f uh, uh. saying we cannot drop any bombs. Kyle Reese is in there. He uh, command seems to know exactly who Carl Reese is. I couldn't really remember that happening. Um, and then he says, "Right, that's it. You're relieved of your st of your station. Basically, get out of my shop." Get out of my shop. But then just leaves John Connor to just kind of wander around willy-nilly. I would have thought that, considering how dangerous John Connor could be perceived to be, wouldn't they arrest him or detain him or put him under some sort of surveillance? They don't. Well, yeah, if he's come out countermanding a direct order from uh, command and he wants to do a completely different thing. I mean, that's insubordination to the highest degree. He's screaming at his commanding officer. Yeah. yeah in front of other people as well. There are people over there. <laughs> like, John, you're fired. Dude, you can get fired for insubordination. Dick! You're fired! Thank you. <laughs> I love the way he says it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The yeah, sensation so you're thought... feeling is being shot through a window. <laughs> <laughs> while quickening. Whoa. Luke. Uh, yeah, so I was I was surprised that uh, Bullshit Bale hadn't been uh, taken out for insubordination. I would have just shot him. Mm. <laughs> We then get more uh, kind of throwbacks to the uh, first Terminator film, uh, when John Connor's giving the speech, saying, "If we don't, if we do this, we are dead. We are all dead." It reminded me of when Kyle is shouting at Sarah, John's mum. He can't be bargained with. He can't be reasoned with. He absolutely will not stop until he gets his blockbuster video membership card. Exactly. But whatever you do, do not go past the date because you will get fined. Uh, although yeah, I do like that, I do terminated. like that little letterbox that you can post it through, so you don't have to go through the embarrassment of like looking the person in the face. <laughs> I remember I used to do it all the time. I used to rent out uh, albums, like CDs, from the library, and I'd always forget. And it used to be on my dad's library cards, and my dad would get all these charges through, and I'd always feel really bad and really guilty. So I'd wait till it's shut, and I just post it through the letterbox. Yeah. Um. What else have I got down here? Fate. Oh yeah, he does all the fate bit again. No fate. That's a throwback to one of the tropes of the Terminator films. Yeah, uh, Terminator Two. We're dead. We're all dead. Uh, we. Oh, he, he does. He goes into proper Bruce Wayne speak in this uh, scene, doesn't he? <sighs> well, we said that a few episodes back. It's like his default American accent, but when he shouts, he kind of like. I mean, either that or Christian Bale was suffering. Disregard from what cancer. I say because I'm a. A nobody podcaster with awful teeth as well, and I've got a slight lisp on my bottom teeth. But Christian Bell's is like so pronounced, it kind of like his speech is affected, I think, to such a degree when he screams, it kind of takes me out of the film. Mm. But everything he's in, yeah, I don't know. Just never I, I, I still stand by what I say. The only film I've ever watched him in that I thought he, I really enjoyed him in, was American Psycho. I thought he was great in that. You really didn't like good. him as Batman? Nope. Ba oh, Batman or Bruce Wayne? Both? or You need to see Affleck as ba Bruce Wayne, I think. Actually, no. I don't think he was bad as Batman. I don't think he's, he's a good actor. I just I find trouble connecting with him when he f sees Yeah, films. but if I can't connect, not, if I can't connect with and I'm you, not saying, I can't... I'm not saying because he's a bad actor. It's not. I don't mean it like that. I just like there's something about him that I don't warm to. I don't know why. What don't you fucking understand? <laughs> he just seems a bit prickly. Yeah. In real he life, just seems answer. really up his own ass. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. Christian Bale, if you are listening to this, uh, the uh, views expressed on this podcast are not reflective of Ethan McKinley's podcast. However, they are my opinions because I can give a fuck, Although mate. we do hate you. 
Uh, <laughs> um, although Guaranteed some Guaranteed. something that really did make me laugh is when when he when he says you're relieved of your station. <laughs> I wanted to be like bullshit. Bale's contract has been terminated. Alan Partridge joke. <laughs> so apt, considering this is Terminator. Um. My next point was, would the boys uh, in the army or the resistance have actually also disobeyed command? Just on John's word. Because uh, Common, the rapper, says, I, I didn't hear that last statement. It's like, really? Would you all put yourselves at such risk for something that they don't even know is sure or could happen? Uh, well, in that sense, I think he's a core cool group of people, which it is. Yeah, I think they trust him. They've probably been through situations like this before, and he's turned out to be right. I mean, that's the only thing with Len Credence to any of his stories. Mm. Otherwise, he just sounds like a raving madman. So some of the stuff he's predicted, or some of the You're things... You're mad, you are! Well, no, I guess he's he's meant to be this great like battle statistician and uh, like great uh, strategist. Isn't that a uh, Stevie Wonder song? Oh, that's very superstitious. <laughs> anyway, news. Uh... <laughs> Oh, um, the gloves he was wearing made me think of your riding gloves. Well, it's probably what they are. They've just cut the fingers out. Yeah. Never never really understood fingerless gloves. Because it's my fingers that get <coughs> the coldest. Well, usually, I mean, they're used for, like, if you're doing using firearms or you're using a bow or anything like that. A bow? Yeah. Cool, we're probably uh, going back in time now. Or, in fact, I think some sniper gloves, or unless snipers customise their gloves this way, they'll, like, the finger will come off on the trigger finger. Trigger figure. Um, my other question was, well, actually, this is my last question. I wonder where Moonface is right now. Well, she's just been released. I know, but where is she? Well, she doesn't come back into the story anymore, does she? Her kind of like... I can't remember. I don't even remember how this ends. Her story arc <laughs> ends. Oh, there's a, I mean, the, the end, I think, is actually good. They go to the... I won't ruin it, but... Shh. There's some shenanigans in the Skynet factory. I'm trying to remember what happened. And there is a CGI Arnold. God, it's going to be so bad. <laughs> you weren't in the fourth film, were you? No. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> oh, Arnold, I you love you. You weren't in Arthur too, were you, Ethan? No, they forgot about me. <laughs> That's not true. You're going to be the star. Uh, yes. My body is a movie and your penis is the star. Terrible film. You know something? Of all the tweets I've ever done, the one I tweeted about the whaling Utani commando figure mm. with the Necker. Yeah, with the alien. Has just blown up like you wouldn't believe. Like really? the, Yeah, the Necker started following me and stuff. That's amazing. Is it amazing? Yeah. Because weirdly, well, you know what? I've paid my Necker dues. I've got like a, about 20 figures, haven't I? Yeah, you've bought me a few and all. Well, I, you know, I assumed you were the Necker person, but it's probably me, even though I've given you my figures now. What is the next Necker figure to get for you, Ellie? God, uh, I just like the aliens. I know it sounds bad. Um, some of the Terminators are pretty cool, but I don't know. I <laughs> it's gonna sound weird. They're horrific, but I actually find the a aliens actually quite beautiful. <laughs> that sounds weird, but I just think they look amazing. Like my queen, I think she's just wonderful. Is that the uh, four, fourth scale queen you got last year? Yeah, that you bought me for my birthday. Happy birthday. Very you need the power loader, though. Very kind. Yeah, the power loader's cool. The That's power loader's really cool, the actually. Queen. Uh, you need Ripley. I don't know. I want Ripley. You can have an empty power loader in a queen. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Ethan McKinley breaks boundaries in the new drag show, The Empty <laughs> Power Loader and the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> and don't fuck it up. I'm quoting RuPaul. I'm not just being vulgar for no reason. Ethan, I, w I got through a whole day of work today without swearing. <laughs> What's your first day? <laughs> Everyone around me is effing and jeffing like you wouldn't believe. It's a better environment than the one you were in previously, though, or the last two opposite Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. People were wearing, like, Converse and T-shirts and jeans. I was like, wow, I feel totally overdressed today. Yeah. So tomorrow I'm going to go in with my pants. No. Um... <laughs> I started uh, a new job today. Uh, very different from anything I've ever done before. Thanks, Ethan. I spent most of the day looking at male models, uh, which I actually only found three of them, like, even semi-attractive. It's like, these these people are models? What? what? 
Uh, yes, I've started a new job uh, in events. Uh, it's a high-end catering company, basically, that I've previously worked for, and I uh, hooked Ellie up, and now you're working with uh, movie stars and models and singers, and you'll be work like doing parties for Elton John and famous people. Famous peeps. Uh, hopefully. And at some stage, I'll be ordering and bossing Ethan around. I can't wait for that. Hopefully, they <laughs> uh, will. Uh, Got the next uh, season out before you really get sucked into this job, and then we can move on to with our lives with other things, other podcasts. I love how you think <coughs> this job's just gonna like suck me in and just take take over my life. I think it will, like Why? because I've seen it. It's like when someone gets the presidency, they start off like, "Yeah, we're gonna ch we're gonna change America. Let's change America, America." Yeah, <laughs> but you you, you quick you quickly see the president get tired and grayer looking and they age terribly in that like four to eight years like if they get one or two terms those two terms they look very old and haggard so is this job gonna make me look old and haggard well i don't know oscar in particular i was noticed looks very tired all the time he's always got dark circles around his eyes etc. yeah event management though i think the event management just from what i've seen today is a lot more stressful because mm. you're physically going to every single job you've got the stress and all the responsibility on your shoulders even though my part is pretty integral, I'm more behind the scenes and it's more my choice to go to the events. I mean, they did say that sometimes they want me to go there, sign everyone in, get everyone signed out, make sure everyone's doing what they need to do, blah, blah, blah. I mean, a lot of them will just be like little things like uh, you'll go to like uh, Patek Philip, which is like a very expensive Swiss, Swiss watchmaker. Mm. And you'll do like four o'clock till eight o'clock at night and you'll just like hand out well the people will hand out champagne and you'll just make sure it's all runs yeah stupid. exactly stuff like that so <coughs> my the event managers have got a lot more stress in regard to that so that might be why i've gone off the road off the range but it's the end of the show oh yeah doesn't matter uh we'll be back tomorrow <laughs> of course with uh, episode 41 Thank you for listening, everyone. You can find us on Twitter at Two Minute Terminator. You can find us on Facebook at Two Minute Terminator. You can find us on <gasps> not SoundCloud at the moment because we're having a little problem as we did last year when SoundCloud has blocked all our shows because they think we're not paying for the shows when in fact we are. They've got the wrong account information even though the money's coming out of my account. They're convinced it isn't. This happened last year. After a few emails and a phone call, we got it sorted out. But I, I wonder how other podcasts have found their experience with SoundCloud. Uh, fine. We just get. We're basically we're having the same problem we had with YouTube previously, where they're they're blocking certain shows because they've got portions of music, and even though you've got music playing in the background now, and we're talking over it, so you can't physically mm, enjoy the there. music as a sync. Well, it's not because it's fair use, and we're not we're not making money. We're not off making this. money. We're it's not, not selling generating it, any revenue, and we're not showing the piece of art in its intact form, so you can't enjoy it for what it is because we're talking over it, and it's in the background on a laptop. Laptop. But the battle goes on. Uh, in the words of Billy Idol, but you can't bring me down. Doing a daily show is very stressful. All the minute people will attest to this. Uh, my hat's off to you all if you are listening. Alien Minute, Back to the Future Minute, Wrath of Khan Minute, Star Wars Minute. <gasps> the new Ghostbusters Minute, welcome to the fall, boys. Ooh, uh, welcome. I know, well, we're the red-headed stepchild. I was going to say, we, we never get mentioned because we're two-minute Terminator. Yeah. We're like <laughs> I like that we stand out, though. And we don't have guests. But, I mean, we have such busy lives otherwise, it's difficult to kind of... Also, I don't think there's actually. any other chicks, really, apart from Star Wars, isn't it? Well, no, they're female guests, but there's no female co-host doing a nerdy thing like this. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know, make of that what you will. I don't well, know. Well, actually, get the best of both of us. You either like our show if you don't. We enjoy boy? doing it. We know. hope you enjoy listening to it. So, uh, we'll see you tomorrow with episode 41. Have a lovely evening. Hot still just a... Baby. <laughs>
fucking done professionally. Fucking ass.